Okay, I'm going to start recording now, um, just so that everyone is on the same page. You are being reported, and I'm going to put the session onto my YouTube channel. Um, if you would not like to be on screen, then um, you're welcome to turn your camera off or anything like that. Um, I did put the disclaimer on, hey, uh, I did put the disclaimer on the um, Eventbrite page, so hopefully you guys already have seen it. Um, so I'm going to start sharing the screen. So welcome to our fourth open fridge session. And today we're making garlic changachi. So the way you pronounce it is chang a ji. So it's three syllables. Um, yeah, so chang would be one, a would be one, and then ji. So that's that's the name for that. That's a Korean word that we use for um, pickling, basically. And it's usually used to preserve food during the winter, especially fruit and veg that are harder to preserve. Um, and we usually dry a lot of stuff in Korea too, but tangachi is also um, like a very, it, I think it dates back into 15 AD um, from one of my researches. And we usually add a little bit of soy sauce and different kinds of ingredients in there that isn't just vinegar or salt, um, which makes it more flavorful. So yeah, for today's step, we're going to first sanitize our jars and then we're going to peel the garlic together. And then we're going to fill the jar with garlic and water to measure how much liquids you can put into your, your specific jar. And then we're going to wash the, gar the, the peeled dry garlic and then dry them, pat them down with kitchen towel. And then pour one cup of, for my, um, for my what I've researched, it says that um, it's going to be half a cup or 120 milligram of vinegar, one tablespoon of um, salt, and one cup or 300 milligram of water. And then we'll cover the jar with dark plastic bags to avoid it getting sunlight. And then we just need to let it sit in the room temperature and wait a week, basically. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. Um, I think I'm going to start stop sharing the screen so that you guys can see my screen when I'm doing my stuff. You can see in more detail. Um, so I'm going to put on a pot of water onto the stove and I'm going to put it on high and then this is the jar that I'm going to use. And what we're going to do is we're going to put it on top so that the vaporization will kind of clean the inside and the lid so that it is um, sanitized. And you're welcome to use tap water for our um, tangachi, but I prefer, I thought it might be better to just use um, like spring water. So I have spring water and, um, and vinegar. So while we're going to wait for the um, water to boil, I'm going to start peeling the garlic. And the reason why it's tricky is because Whenever, um, whenever there's a little bit of scratch or dent on the garlic, it becomes very dark because we're putting soy sauce in it and the garlic will be colorized. Um, the tip or whatever you're peeling, it's going to get dark. So if it's dented a lot, if you, especially if you buy already peeled garlics, then they will already have like a lot of dents in it that you probably can't see. Um, and then it'll be kind of, it looks very moldy and weird. It's not, it's not nice basically, um, but it doesn't matter. They still taste the same. So um, you guys are welcome to start peeling. <laughs> Rebecca? Yeah. Is your connection okay? Really? Oh, I can't tell if she left or she's coming in. So I've peeled the first layer of the garlic. Um, and usually we also use the stem of the garlic for pickling as well, which I'll get to later on. Um, but for ours, we're just gonna use the bulbs.
So it does take um, quite a while for the garlic to kind of um, finish, I mean, kind of um, finish fermenting basically. Um, it, it lasts actually up to two years. I thought it was a year, my um, aunt, she told me hers is two years and it gets better with time because the sauce is more marinated into the garlic. Um, and the crunchiness is never lost. So that's nice. Um, and basically what I do when I'm peeling is, oh no, I think this garlic is bad. This one is not. That happened to but, me, it smelled moldy. So no. I had to go buy new garlic. Weird, okay. Oh, the rest seems okay. Um, so basically what I do is I try to minimize any kind of dent in the garlic. So even at the very top, I try to keep it very, very minimal so that I don't cut like the, the, the meat off. It's just kind of like at the very edge. Um, so how do you... Uh, how do you separate the bulbs then without damaging them? The cloves um, from the bulbs. You do kind of have to um, chop off the very top, but it's just very minimal, or you can just kind of, I'll show you. So let's take this one, for example. So this one has a very tiny top mm -hmm. and it's harder. So mm -hmm. I just kind of go like this, very, very small, like mm -hmm. not the whole thing. And then I start peeling the skin like this. Okay. All yeah. right. Yeah. Um, my pot is boiling. I don't know if yours is too. I'm going to go back to the pot. And I'm going to put the jar from the side and then from the top. And then I'm going to put the lid. And then, well, and let the vaporization kind of modify it. If it starts to boil a lot, then you can turn the heat off because the heat will still be there and the jar can kind of just rest in there. And I think the sanitization is actually one of the key components because if your jar is not sanitized, then any kind of fermentation process can be um, a mess. <laughs> How many bulbs are you guys using? Um, are we using cloves, like the little individual ones? Or the big bulbs. So I got confused on that part. That that's my that's my fault. Um, so I'm using um, whatever fits into my jar. I think I'm assuming it's going to be about three bulbs. Um, I'm not going to measure exactly if it's going to be twenty cloves or not. It's just whatever fits your jar. Um, I'm just wondering what kind of um, like how many how many jar uh, how many you've you've got and well, I have three bulbs. <clears throat> Um, so I'll probably get, or yeah, I have three bulbs, so I'll probably get, I don't know, about 20 cloves from the three of them, but that's, okay. that's a really small amount. Yeah, it's that's not, it's not a lot, I think, um, but if it works successfully, then you can try it again, and hopefully, um, by that time, you'll know what to, what to do, um, from this. Okay, like, are we packing the jar, or are we just covering the garlic? With, um, um, we're going to cover, we're going to close the lid um, and let it sit there. But I do would rec I would recommend go ahead, like go inside and check how it's doing once in a while, like stir it up. Um, sometimes the garlic floats up to the surface and my aunt would usually put down like a smaller glass, you know, like bowl or something to kind of press the garlic down. Mm -hmm. um, but that's up to you guys. Okay. Um, I have a question. Yeah. What 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 if you don't have the lid for the jar? Oh, um, how big is it? Can I see? 
Yeah. It's really, really small because I don't have a jar, but like, I don't know if you can see it. Okay. So I don't think you can fit, maybe you can fit two bulbs in there? I'm uh -huh. just using one. It has about 20 cloves in one. Okay. Um, I'm hoping if you have a, a, like a rubber band and some kind of wrapping material, then you can wrap the top. Uh, can I wrap it with like foil or something? Sorry? Can I wrap it with foil. like foil? Yeah. Foil. Um, I'm not sure actually. Foil, because foil is not completely tight. Um, I'm not sure. I've never really seen anybody try it with the foil. You could try it and hopefully um, it won't go, it won't gain any bad mold. Oh no. <laughs> Shit. What about a couple of layers of paper towel added to it with an elastic? Yeah. Um, that might be better. And then put the foil on top maybe because the air circulation okay. would work for the... Yeah. So if we buy the uh, the garlic that's already peeled, I know you touched on that earlier. Is mm -hmm. is it okay to use that even though it yeah, will have yeah. a lot of it's completely fine. Um, the thing is, though, I'm going to, I was going to um, explain this on the later slides, but uh, basically the spiciness that is in the garlic, um, that the, the component in it makes the garlic become, um, it has a green hue. So if, if the garlic is old, then it tends to get green. That doesn't mean that it's molding or that it's gone bad. You can still eat it and it has the same effect. It's just the coloring. Um, which might look scary, but it's absolutely fine. Um, <laughs> but yeah, if you do use like old garlic, even even if it's not peeled, even if it's a whole bulb, if it's old garlic, then it probably might it, it might go green, especially if it gain, uh, sees a lot of sunlight. So it's it's nice to it's always safer to have everything covered. Um, Where are you guys with the peeling process? How how much have you got? Still peeling. I've yeah. done one bulb. I have two more to go. Nice. One, That's quite two, fast. Three, four, five, six. So I got eight. I got eight close from one bulb. That's nice. That's perfect. That sounds like a perfect. Yeah. I'm still getting on, I think. I've done this recipe with my grandma and my mom and my aunt several times, but I've never done it by myself. And I'm realizing how long it takes to peel the garlics when it's just by yourself, whereas if it's a group of women. Yeah, it takes much faster. Yasmin, yeah, I think you already told me this before, but where are you joining from? Toronto. Toronto. Oh. Canada. Yeah. Wow. Okay. That's so, okay. yeah, that's so far away from here. <laughs> <laughs> We're global, baby. <laughs> I'm assuming it's very cold now there, right? Um, not yet. It's cooler, definitely. So I haven't looked. I haven't even turned on the TV or checked the weather, but mm -hmm. I'm assuming it's about eight, maybe five. Mm. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I think we're about 15, like 13 degrees. Really? <laughs> yeah. It's probably nice and breezy for you guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would be a heat wave right about now. Wow. Oh, the water is boiling. Oh yeah, keep keep an eye on the water. Phoebe, how's your jar? Is it sanitized? Uh, it stays in the pot and it's, it's sanitizing. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. It's being sanitized, so yeah, let's go. And we already peeled all the garlic. We have oh, to peel them. Okay. And, and peel together is much more faster, and uh, we have some very small cloves. Mm -mm. And so, yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and uh, the small cloves, so like we have 30 in total. I'm also thinking about um, doing something with garlic peel, so like the 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 skin. Mm. I, yeah, I've seen it somewhere how um, one of the chefs, she was turning it into like a chip, like chips that you can eat. Wow. You, or you can like grind them up and like sprinkle them on top of this stuff for garnish, which sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah, that sounds interesting. Yeah. But the thing was for the chip recipe, you had to put the chips in the oven for quite a long time for like, I think a couple hours. And and I was like, okay, probably the carbon emission that you save from saving those, you know, food waste is probably being used for that energy. A dehydrator might work better. Mm, that's true, yeah. in terms of uh, carbon emissions. Oh, are dehydrators better in carbon than ovens? Mm, I think so. They just, um, I think they would have to use less energy. I mean, it's a smaller, it's a smaller piece of equipment. Ah, uh, right, I see. Yeah, in Korea, we always just spread it on in the sun, but here we don't get it a lot. So oh. um, yeah, I guess dehydrator, We've never seen it, and I've never seen it in Korea. It's an exotic, westernized thing, I think. Mm -hmm. I don't have one. I use my when I, I don't dehydrate things very often, but mm -hmm. when I do, I do use the oven because that's all I have, and I, it's like you know weighing one waste against the other. Mm -hmm. I see. I have a question. This is not related to garlic at all. But um, Benoli and I, we went to a bulk store yesterday and there was this lady who talked about um, um, soaking and um, dehydrating the, the nuts so that the enzyme that's protecting it would melt away or something like that. Mm -hmm. Has anyone heard of that? I've never heard yeah. of that. It's called um, sprouting. So you sprout, mm -hmm. your, you sprout your nuts, you can sprout some grains too. Mm -hmm. There's some uh, anti-nutrient in there. Mm -hmm. So you eat them and they're just roasted mm -hmm. or even raw and not sprouted first, which is what the, the soaking does, mm -hmm. then the harder to digest. So in a way, it works a bit like fermentation. Oh, uh, wow. soaking them and then drying them actually makes the nutrients in them more accessible, more digestible. Uh -huh. And for people who have nut allergies or whose stomachs are upset by nuts, mm -hmm. uh, it works really, really well. It minimizes that. Wow, that's amazing. I've mm -hmm. never heard of that. Yeah, because yeah. Bill said, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say that's uh, occasionally I will do that. Mm -hmm. I actually prefer them that way. They just, they taste better. Mm -hmm. And uh, a couple of times I bought nuts from places where I don't usually buy them, where they're already peeled. Uh, I'll never forget. I had been sprouting them for a while and then I stopped mm -hmm. and then I bought some nuts and I didn't sprout them. So usually you sprout for, depending on the nut, uh, maybe about eight hours. So if you have a couple of nuts, you'll do two cups of water and a cup of nuts. And then you just let them sit covered for about eight hours and then you uh, dry them and then put them on low heat. You could actually, a toaster oven even would be better, I think, mm. than a conventional oven. Anyhow, I ate these nuts and I didn't sprout them and oh, and I'm a nut lover, but my stomach killed me. Oh wow, really? Pain, yes. Oh. Cause I, I guess I'd gotten used to, to eating the sprouted version. Right. Oh, I think I'll try that. Mm -hmm. So I eat nuts I think... all the time to the point- Oh, me too. <laughs> Yeah, just Google it and you'll see, you'll see the, the science behind it. Cool. Thank you so much. Great yeah. insight. 
So you asked me, what, what makes you in interested in like fermentation and experimenting with food and stuff like that? Um, because I'm a foodie. I consider myself a foodie, not a food professional. And, um, you know, there was a, a time where, like, I, I took antibiotics mm -hmm. um, every time, like, just before every dental appointment. Oh, wow. um, that, that is until the recommendations change, but I've been doing it for years. And so I was convinced, based on some issues I was having, that my gut health was really poor. Mm -hmm. So uh, I started experimenting uh, with fermented food, and um, it helps. Mm -hmm. I feel virtuous too although I know it helps me as well I just mm -hmm. feel that's amazing and, and I'm also really interested in that what do they call it the, the gut brain access mm -hmm. I I think that's a thing brain you know how the the mind and the gut they they communicate right. to each other right right it's like many aspects of health so I stopped eating I used to make um, like a fermented pickle, you know, I never really made anything too complicated. I made kimchi once or twice. I made this fermented cucumber a couple mm -hmm. of times as a condiment, but I didn't, it was okay. Mm -hmm. I, I ate it because it was fermented, but the mm -hmm. onion kimchi that mm -hmm. we made, that was fantastic. Oh, wow. I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I saw I took you my picture. I don't know if you saw it. I think I got it, but I couldn't open it for some reason. Maybe it, it might be the file format. Okay. Yeah, I would love to get it again. Um, but okay. Yeah. What 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 was it like for you to like taste it? Was it too like smelly or like? Uh, no, it was funky. I didn't put as much sugar in it as you recommended, which is why, um, like I was kind of like I was worried like mm -hmm. at the day two because nothing was happening and I know you need like the right amount an adequate amount of sugar in there mm -hmm. for mint to take place so um I was worried it would be too sweet it's just slightly sweet mm -mm. and um it's it's delicious like I it's it's way better than the um than the kimchi yeah. or the cucumber pickle that mm -hmm. I made and actually I love mango salsa but it oh. it's a little high in carbs and mm -hmm. there's no like health benefit to it mm -hmm. so um last night i used it instead of um instead of salsa as mm -hmm. a condiment in like tuna salad yeah just tuna with mayonnaise and i used to i oh, used wow. the onion kimchi awesome. instead yeah that was, it was fabulous i was so happy Wow, that sounds amazing. I'm so happy to hear that. This is like my mission in life is to like spread the love of kimchi. Yeah, no, it, it's great. I love it. I, I just, the store-bought stuff, it usually has ingredients. Mm -hmm. Pretty much any store-bought thing. Uh, well, many of them, they have ingredients in them that I don't mm -hmm. necessarily want to eat. What do they put in? I don't even know what the, what, what store-bought kimchi is like because I never buy kimchi. I I bought it once. It was horrible. I think they use um it's been a few years, but I think the one that I well, first of all, I bought one mm -hmm. and uh, it said mildly spicy. And mm -hmm. at that time, like uh, for most of my life, I've eaten a lot of like really spicy things. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's like it was off the chart. Oh. And it was bitter. And then they put um some kind of weird oil in it. Oh, oil. Okay. Yeah, I I don't know what they're doing <laughs> with that. Not me either. <laughs> That's not how it's supposed to be. I think um, ca Napa cabbage kimchi that you would normally see is like a lot harder to actually work with than onion or muli, um, because they take up a lot more um spices. They absorb more spices. Mm -hmm. So it and also actually chili is actually not a very good ingredient. I mean, the plant itself is great for you, but nowadays in modern days, most of the chili powders are from, they use a lot of pesticides. And my mom oh. warned me, yeah, to not use that many pepper, um, chili powder, if, even, if, even if you do need it for certain ingredients to use it um, minimally. Okay. So, yeah, I try to get the organic ones, like other kind of ingredients I'm okay with, but Chili powder, I'm quite uh, sensitive. I try to look for nice ones, but um, yeah, those are hard to come by, I think, 
it's just almost impossible to not use pesticides for well, to be heard. yeah well you know i it it's it's one planet it's one water it's one people so even even the organic product i, I think that's a bit of a mislabeling mm -hmm. how, how can something be like totally sequestered from the rest of the environment mm -hmm. the water and the soil because it it migrates across the planet yeah like you don't know what's in the water that they're spraying like we don't, we can't measure everything mm -hmm. that's so true and even with organic products i read this on a website a few years ago a reputable website even mm -hmm. even if it's organic um say you buy an organic fruit or vegetable you still have to wash it you know it doesn't mean it's completely you know pure yeah they find microplastics in like apples nowadays inside mm -hmm. the apples not on the skin or anything which yeah. is like wild so oh and fish fish yeah of course yeah, yeah. Eat it too so I, I was doing a bit of uh, like personal research into I have this theory I was discussing with my brother about the coronavirus. Mm -hmm. And I, I really do believe, you know, it's one planet, it's one water, it's it's one earth. So just because um, one country that is adjacent to another country has low rates mm -hmm. of infection, it doesn't mean that the other countries that are close by mm -hmm. can't affect it. Yeah. So didn't see any proof or evidence of that. And then I was reading this fiction book called The End of October. So the guy who wrote this book, he had um, he wrote it and he published it before mm -hmm. uh, coronavirus. Mm -hmm. And it's about a, a global pandemic. It is, I believe wow. it is coronavirus, but it's a different one. It's just like this, except it goes right to the very end of, of I guess what you would consider stage two. But he spoke to a lot of different scientists and military people. Mm -hmm. There's this claim, everything I saw in his book that I didn't believe, I looked it up. Mm -hmm. And so apparently, um, not our particular coronavirus, because that's not what he was talking about, mm -hmm. but scientists have done experiments ac across the globe. Mm -hmm. And so they put containers at the top of mountaintops mm -hmm. um, just to collect rainwater just to see yeah um, what would come out yeah. and they found the exact genetically identical strain of some virus like on a mountaintop like on a different continent completely wow. my so, so we're awesome. wondering like how could like, how could places have uh, a breakout of the same disease at this, pretty much the same time and that's what it is it travels in the air mm -hmm through the gulf streams and all of that so yeah it really is i mean we do the best we can mm -hmm. but they, i think you don't really i didn't not really take mm -hmm. into consideration just how connected everything is to everything mm -hmm. else. yeah that's so true that's so wild the same virus it's a good book it sounds like it yeah it was it was and it wasn't a hard read um the science in it though like a lot of it i just like there were things in there i'd never heard of places i'd never heard of um like there's some there like a couple of big bunkers in the u.s there's one um beneath camp david so that's where if the president is close to camp david and some disaster happens like that's where they that's where him and his staff go and it's not like a like a, an underground cave it's like a city oh wow again apparently you can access it from an elevator in in the president's bedroom in camp david wow. and so i kept looking this stuff up yeah this guy <laughs> knew what he was talking about it's it's a real thing that's so cool <laughs> that sounds wild <laughs> yeah, it was crazy it's like what i don't believe that I'm moving on to my third bulb now. I don't I'm know. Done. How many do I have? One, two, three, four. Oh, we're running out of time. We might have to rejoin oh, the yes. session. I've done four bulbs. Four bulbs. Wow, you're fast. Yeah, like faster than I thought. <laughs> it's talking and feeling at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> 
I think this is like the core of com like communal um, cooking is like the best part. It's just the chatting and yeah, yeah. But only where are you with your garlics? You peeled? Oh, I am done. Like I was done a long time ago. I have like fifteen cloves and I peeled everything. Okay. So I started making smoothie in the process because I was like, I'm hungry now. Go ahead. Anyway. Yeah. It's lunchtime. I'm assuming that PP, you're already, you've already eaten. No. <laughs> Hey. Um, uh, sorry, do you want to go past? Oh, uh, no, no, that's fine. Not okay. oh, great. Oh. I'm actually trying to make the Napa cabbage kimchi. Uh, but it's actually hard to really find the right container, I feel like, because it's usually way too big, way too small, and I'm wondering it'll fit in the fridge and stuff like that, so it's, it's like more difficult than I imagined. I've, I've made Napa kimchi. Oh, you have? I have, only once, and I used, um, I think it's a, hang on, let me look, because I still have I think it's a liter. That jar oh. doesn't have any. You know. you just give me, uh, if you open the fridge and there is a sauce, uh, the Kormama, and then we have vegan sauce, and uh, the one in the middle. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. No measurements, but two two good sized mason jars mm -hmm. will will fit if you if you really jam it in there. <laughs> okay. Because you have to make sure it's submerged, right? Yeah, yeah. And just squish it. Do you have any plans on how to make uh, like how to eat these um, pickled uh, uh, garlic? I really want to use it this way or that way. I don't. What What would you suggest? The traditional way we, I mean, not the traditional way, the most common way to eat the a garlic tachi would be with meat usually. So Korean barbecue is quite famous. So mm -hmm. like when we eat a lot of barbecue, we would have on the side these tachi and we usually make a wrap in our hands like for one, one bite wraps basically. So we would put like a lettuce on the very bottom and then we would put a piece of meat and then samjang, which is a different kind of sauce, and then one piece of the pickled garlic and maybe a piece of kimchi or something. And that'll be like one, one bite. One Ooh, that's bite nice. wrap. Yeah, that's, that's like the most common way to eat it. But um, my mom, my family just kind of eats it with like different kinds of dishes all the time. It could be um, a common side dish with um, just rice and my mom would make like fish stew and it'll go with that. It's basically just like an acidic side dish that will go with anything that's kind of greasy. Because mm -hmm. like grease and acidity goes together. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those, that's, that would help. And then also you can also like chop it into smaller pieces and put it as garnish on like wraps or sandwiches. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and all of that. So um, it's it's quite easy to incorporate them. And um, I think you can also cook it in different ways too. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I'll have to, um, have that. your ideas sound really good. I like the wrap idea. Yeah, I'm really excited to try it out. And also if you like, um, I think I haven't tried this before, but in my head, I'm thinking if you grind it and then like put different kind of like mustard seeds or something inside, um, it can also be like a salad dressing. Yes, yeah. yes. I like that. 
and even a marinade for meats. Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, I'm just excited to have something that's homey. <laughs> I'm almost done with my third bulb. I think it'll be perfect timing to re-enter the chat because I'm running out of time for the Zoom. Um, and hopefully we can get going with the rest of the recipe. And then by the way, if you still want to like add some more garlic afterwards, then you can, you know, still add some more um, on, the, on the same day. Um, so you are always welcome to change it up. So I'm using the recipe that my aunt gave me, but I looked, looked up the recipes online and there's a ton of different variations. And some people are like, okay, the first batch has to have the soy sauce. No, the second batch has to have the soy sauce and <laughs> the sugar enter, et cetera. And there was just so many variations. So it was actually kind of fascinating. Okay. I think I'm done for now. Yeah, that's finished. How is everyone? Is everyone done with peeling the garlic? Hebe's good, but always good. Yasmin? Yep, I'm good. Okay. Um, then let's re-enter the chat. I'm gonna just keep in mind that it won't last as long. Yeah, you can put it. But in. I cut the head off. I cut a head off. Is that all right or no? Um, it should be fine, but that that'll make it wither faster, I think. Yeah. Yeah, but it should be fine. Like I already have like this garlic that is quite dented because part of it was kind of molding, and I know that this one will be uglier than like <laughs> a nice fresh one. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to put the garlic into the jar. Is it okay if the bottom end of the garlic, uh, the bottom ends? Good. So here's the right bottom. Mm -hmm. but cut the end off. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, Rebecca? Yeah. So we're supposed to put all the garlic in the jar. And yeah. Then... And then we're going to put in, mine's like quite small. I'm going to definitely add more to this, I think. Um, we're going to pour um, water in, but before you just put in the tap water, we're going to measure how much water is coming. So Elaine is here. Um, we're going to measure how much water you put in. Okay. How and much? Well, um, so I'm just going to explain that we're recording. Mm. I think. No. For everyone else, I'm going to measure how much water I'm going to put in um, so that I know how much liquid it's going in there. So I'm going to start, because my jar is quite big, I'm going to start by adding maybe 500 milliliter of water and see how much. How it well, so what would you say is the ratio? So water is supposed to be two and vinegar is supposed to be one. And then we're just going to add a tea tablespoon of salt. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
so are we adding enough water to cover the garlic? Enough water to cover the garlic and a little bit, like, just a bit like above it so that it's kind of submerged. If it's okay. rising up to the top, then we can add some stuff to weigh it down. Okay. All right. Great. This is five milliliter. Do you put in enough water to like dip all the garlic in? Yeah, that's been asking some questions. So, yeah, so maybe you, you put in. So mine, like, some of them are dripping, some of them are coming up. Yeah, I'm going to have to put something to lay down. So basically, I'm definitely going to add more garlic afterwards. I think five milliliter is good for mine. Um, let me know what milliliter you guys have so that we can try to calculate the ratio together. I don't. Even, I didn't even use hundred. I used like fifty. Okay. How's yours looking, PP? Rebecca, is that too little, or should I add more water? I add three hundred mils. No, I think that's okay. Okay, cool. Yeah. Hi, Elaine. I don't know if you if you can see and hear me. Um, we're recording the session so that we can put it up. Um, we can upload it. Um, and if you have any questions on where we are, we basically, oh, Louisa is entered. Um, we basically just um, uh, peeled and um, now we're trying to measure the liquid that we can put in the jar according to how much garlic we have. Um, hi, Louisa, we're recording this session for uploading. Um, right now we're at the step of, we've already peeled the garlic and we've sanitized the jar and now we're measuring the liquid. Um, measurements. So this is just water and I put in five milliliters um, and this is I think perfect for my size. So that's that's going to be um, my measurement that I'm going to have in my head. So five milliliters that's going to be I'm not good at math. <laughs> five milliliters is let's see. Um, I'm going to put, I think, 160 milliliters of um, vinegar and double that for water, and it'll come up to 500 for the whole liquid. Um, I don't know if that makes sense. Does everybody understand? So it's the ratio two to water to one vinegar? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that, that makes it easier. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, someone in chat. Okay. Yes, yes, Louisa. Two, um, yeah, two cups. All right, so I'm going to drain it and I'm going to wash the garlic and then we can put it on, um, on pieces of kitchen towel and we were going to pat it dry. Um, All right, Rebecca, can I ask you again? I, I didn't hear that part. Is it, uh, should I add the vinegar to the pot first? It doesn't matter what you put in first because it's going to mix anyway. Um, so basically the ratio is two to one water and one vinegar. So, um, so if I use 50 ml of water, does that mean I use 25 ml of vinegar? Yeah, 50 amount of water and 25 oh, yeah. and okay. 75 in total. Can you fit okay. in your jar? What? Can you fit 75 in your jar or is it? I think I can, yeah. Okay, if it's uh, if you want to put less than that, then you can divide that into three. Okay. And then okay. okay. So we're pouring the water out and rinsing the garlic? Yes, yes. And then we'll add water to that. Yeah, we're going to, um, I use tap water to measure just because it's for measuring purposes, but for the actual water that's going to be fermented with the garlic, I'm going to use the uh, bot, store bot water. Okay. Yeah.
Show the process of pat drying. Um, Rebecca, yeah, yeah. I think is she Rebecca? Yeah. Uh, I think I missed. So I, what do I have to do now? I put vinegar in it, and do I drain the water now? Did you rinse it? What What do you mean rinse it? Rinse the garlic? No. Oh, <laughs> we we basically poured out the water again, and we rinse the garlic. And now I'm pat drying it, and then I'm going to put the water back in again and the vinegar. Um, Shit. I can drain it again and then do it. If you don't want to waste the vinegar, then you can go ahead with it. But I think that cleaning the garlic before putting it in is a good idea. Okay. It depends, it depends on how much how much uh, vinegar you can afford to lose. <laughs> no, it's fine. I can do it. I think. Okay. So I patted them dry. They're looking quite nice. Um, and I'm going to put them back into the jar again. Um, I, I see little pieces of skin um, and it's, it's like good to take them out. Mm, so I'm putting it back. So another thing to keep in mind is um, if for me, um, I do have, uh, I think two pieces of garlic that I've um, dented quite a bit because it was starting to mold. So if the garlic is exposing a lot of its meat, the, um, the starchiness will kind of seep out from the garlic into the liquid and that'll cause the liquid to become murky, um, which is fine, like it's just how it is, but I'm just letting you know that when it becomes murky, that's why, that's why it's happening. If you want it to stay clear, then it's better to use garlic that isn't dented. Hope that makes sense. <laughs> hmm, good to know. Yeah. So I think I'm ready to pour the rest of the ingredients in. So 160 milliliter of vinegar. So this is the vinegar. And water. Double that, so 220. Okay. 
Now I'm adding one tablespoon of salt. What are you adding now? I want one tablespoon of salt. Tablespoon or teaspoon? Tea, 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 sorry, tea tablespoon. Um, yeah, tea tablespoon of salt. Now I'm going to close the lid. I have a question. Yeah. I'm going to turn my camera on. Go ahead. Sorry? So do you mean a tablespoon like this or this small one? The small one is, is a, this a tea tablespoon, right? The bigger one is a tablespoon? That's a tablespoon. And it's just tea food. Yeah, tea tablespoon. Yeah, tea, tea okay. one, the small one. Yeah. So when it's small. Did you add sugar too? No, we're going to add sugar for the second part. Okay. Yeah. Does everyone know that there this is the first part and the second part is next week? Sorry, Rebecca. Um, the tea tablespoon is small one, right? Small this one. is a big one. Yeah. Small one. Small one. Yeah. Um, do we also add chilies or is that not? You can you can put it in, um, but it'll wilt faster than the garlic, so you will have to consume them faster than the garlic. Oh, I'm not gonna add it then. Okay. So this is how mine's looking right now. It's looking nice um, and where it should be. Um, and oh. sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. How's yours looking? I want to see. Oh, amazing. How about yours, PP? How's yours? I don't know if she can hear me yet. PP? Oh, no, the light is like, ah, okay. Ooh, look, nice. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take a shot of everyone's uh, results, if that's okay. Can we hold it up to the screen like this? <laughs> That's okay. I, I think it depends. I'm using salt. I'm using pink salt. Ah, okay. Looks pretty, you guys. Yay. Cool. I just got the screenshot. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you so much. This is amazing. Um, I'm going to now cover it up with um light blocking um bags. Or you know what, you can just keep it in the cupboard. I think that'll be fine because it won't be exposed to light. Or you know what, just be safe. I'm just going to cover it. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to cover it up. Um, put it in the cupboard. Has everyone finished? Um, with the whole process? Yes. Okay. Amazing. Um, I'm going to just share a tiny bit of information about um, what we just made. So I made a list of, this is a very small list, by the way, a list of all the damaji that we make in Korea. So we have melon. Um, I don't know how to pronounce it. This is all like I searched it up in English because I already know all the words in Korean. <laughs> um, like alandas shoot, uh, radish is pretty common. Fatsia sprout, we call it turup. And perla leaf, perla leaf, people confuse it with sesame leaf, but those two are different. So um, I'll show you what perla looks like. So this is the seeds of the perilla. So they're rounder than the sesame seeds, but they're quite commonly used. So sesame seeds and perilla, they always um, kind of are the main kind of um, nutty flavor that will be added into most of our dishes. So it's kind of easy to confuse the two, but the perilla leaf that we see here, it's not from the sesame leaf, it's from this kind of seed. 
So um, we use this a lot. This is a very, very common um, ingredient. Pearl leaf is, I think, um, one of the most fragrant things that you can um, eat. If you go to an Asian store, they might have it. If you want to um, just try smelling it um, for the experience of what it's actually like, I really recommend it. And then we have wild leek, um, tangati. So this is like the before and after of um, making it into a, a tangati. And then this is the garlic stem. Um, and then bellflower root. Um, and then lancio latte root. <laughs> um, we call it tabak and um, different things, but uh, fisher raw growth. This one, this one I haven't tried um, because usually we would have them steamed and then we would put sesame, sesame oil and um, a bit of bean paste and we would just kind of go like this and eat it fresh. Um, so we don't actually do a lot of tangachi with this specific, specific type of um, weed or herb. I don't know what to call it. But yeah, this is the various kinds of um, um, tangachi that we have in Korea. Has anyone heard of um, some of these ingredients or seen it? Or um, like, are you curious about trying one of them? What are your thoughts? The melon looks interesting. Yeah. I haven't tried it before. Yeah, I'm assuming it's quite sweet. <laughs> and the radish, the daikon, that looks good too. Yeah, the daikon one is really nice, especially if you make it in from a fresh one, that's also good. But another little trick that my grandma does is she dries them in the sun for a little bit so that it becomes kind of shrinked and shriveled. And then mm -hmm. once you make it into a tangachi, it becomes this like, like the crunchy sound is um, better because it, it, um, it's kind of like, not a jelly, but like it's more chewy. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's nicer in my opinion. Um, and yeah, it has a better texture. Um, what about you guys, PP Bonoli? I think they're busy cleaning up. <laughs> 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 yeah, uh, like I never do the melon. I don't know like how it tastes like that because melon we just used to eat it as a fresh. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. know like how you can. But it's fermented melon. Yeah, so tangachi, which is like a pickle. So as you can see, they can sometimes put some like chili powder in there, but mostly it's just consisted of vinegar and soy sauce. Um, what about you, um, Benoli? I think I've only tried the radish. I think that's the only, the, the first time you introduced me, like when we did the kimchi, I think. But I think the melon, I eat raw as well. I don't put anything on it. Mm -hmm. like... Gotcha. Anyone else? I don't know if Elaine and Louisa, if um, you guys are still here or if you can speak or anything. If not, completely fine, no pressure. <laughs> um, you're welcome to just uh, cruise in. So I just kind of wanted to um, quickly talk about the benefits of gar garlic tangati. Um, the, it's actually called, we have a saying um, that a table with garlic in it is better than a pharmacy because garlic has so many medicinal um, ingredients, which actually we talked about, um, Bonoli and I talked about because, uh, because of its powerful medicinal qualities, some say that it's actually poisonous to eat it too much and all the time. Um, and it does cause stomach problems if you eat it raw, which most people don't eat it raw. But um, I think the 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 um, alisin, um, I think is the is alisin is the quality that makes it spicy, and that can be quite aggravating to your stomach if you consume it raw. But once it's cooked down, or once or once it's fermented, the enzyme does break down, and it combines with the vitamin B two uh, B six in our body, and it produces it helps produces insulin, so it actually helps with diabetes, um, and it also reduces cholesterol, and it is antibacterial, um, and uh, depending on whatever um, you're focusing on, trying to reduce, and I didn't know this part actually. I've heard the rest of it before, but the uh, it actually has anti-intestinal warm um, ingredients to it. And uh, it's not quite common um, anymore. Like modern people don't have it as much, but back in the days 
when you're eating um, stuff that's raw, when you're eating like fish or meat that is cooked properly or that is left outside for too long, then it's very quite very common to get intestinal worms. Um, and they didn't have me medicine to get rid of them back then. So the garlic would really help with that. Um, and the fermentation increases the sulfate and pro uh, fructose in garlic. So it actually preserves all the um, ingredients. So when you cook it down, then it burns it, whereas fermentation will uh, preserve all the uh, good ingredients, but also increase the sulfate and fructose. So it's like sweeter and um, it's, it's healthier. And I provided some these two pictures here. So the, the first picture here is the black garlic. We would, um, it's a technique, it's a very old technique. It, it actually is like quite medicinal, just rather than eating it raw or cooking with it or even making it into a tangati, this is like the form, like the ultimate medicinal form of garlic. Um, they, I think they slow cook it in, um, in a rice cooker for like hours and hours and it becomes this black um, garlic and they can make it into a syrup and we can eat the syrup when you're sick um, it's supposed to help with like stamina. So like it's very popular amongst like older guys. Um, and also we have it into a powder form and then they put, make it into these balls. And um, so it'll be medicinal basically. Um, that's kind of the benefits of what we are making today. And then I just provided you guys with the Instagram and email um, so that if you have any questions, you can always reach me and ask questions. Um, and um, yeah, basically I'm going to continue next week for the second part, um, which will be like, it's not going to be that, it's going, just going to be as easy as this, except for the, we don't, we're not gonna peel the garlics. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think that's about it for what I prepared today. Does anyone have any questions or comments, feedback? How long does it take? After, how long will it take up next week to okay. allow that's a good question so um it depends i think on how fresh you want the garlic to taste so if you want it to taste like it's raw form then you can eat it um as soon as i think three to four weeks that's the soonest but it can last i said like i said until like one or two years so the longer you wait, the more marinated it'll be and the, the, the softer garlic will be. So it depends on what stage you want it to be. But I would say if you want to start eating it as quickly as possible, then wait until at least three to four weeks. Um, okay. Yeah, that'll, that, I think that's a good, that's a good number. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyone else have any questions or comments? Did you guys have fun today? <laughs> Uh, yeah, it was great. Great, amazing. That's that's like all I'm here for. I think that's like <laughs> always something that's you know the most important part is to have fun. I think. <laughs> How about you, PP? I see you smiling and laughing. <laughs> about when you're supposed to take up the paper chew of the jar. Oh, yeah, yeah. She said, like, sooner, like, uh, when should we take off the chili pepper? You said three to four weeks to ferment the garlic. So chili mm -hmm. pepper should be last, uh, should be take sooner, like two weeks or how oh, long should we? Have to take so what I meant by that is, like, garlic would um, last two to three years, whereas the pepper would only last a few months. That's what I mean. Like, you don't need to take it out. Um, you just need uh -huh. to it faster than the garlic because garlic you know it's it's more harder the consistency is harder whereas the pepper flimsy so like you don't want it to degrade completely into the vinegar that it becomes this like wishy whirly thing if you want it to be in like its complete form but you want it to be marinated completely you can totally wait like a couple months and it'll be fine Just don't go over you know the point where it's more like like a i don't know it's almost like <laughs> a sauce or something <laughs> So like it should be ready in three three weeks, like oh, three four weeks for all of this stuff like pepper and garlic. Yeah, all of it to get ready. Um, I wanted yeah. to I wanted to hold a tasting session for all of you, but I know that you know like you don't need to. We're just going to taste it and just talk about it. Um, so it's not going to be a lot of like content. You can still do that on your own. I don't know if you still want to do that or anything. 
What do you guys think? Yeah, I'm cool with that. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know when. Yeah, would okay. we'll love to join that. Okay, I'll hold. Um, I'll send you guys the link for the um, tasting session. I'm going to hold it um, a month from now. I want to say, or should we? To make it safe, do you, we want to say a month from next week. So, mm -hmm. so on the 29th of November. Yeah? Yes. Sounds That's good. Fair. Amazing. I'm going to... And then I'll start sharing the screen. One sec. Is everyone able to see the Google um, Sheets page? I see the screen. You do see the screen. Yeah, the garlic jiangaji. <laughs> yeah, amazing. Yeah, so we're we are where we're supposed to be. So for this session, I'll let you guys know how the steps are going to be. So it's very simple. We're just going to drain the mixture into a pot. And we're going to put for one half cup of sugar, one half cup of wine or sake or whatever um, um, Yasmin is using, um, champagne, whatever you choose, and then one half of the soy sauce, one cup, uh, one half cup of the soy sauce, and then we're going to boil it and then let it cool and pour it back onto the container. Oh no, the C is missing. Sorry about that. Um, so that's the procedure. Um, so let's just get started right away. I'm going to stop sharing so that you can see my screen in a bigger, bigger way. Um, hey, no problem. Um, so mine turned out to be very green, very blue, um, which is fine, by the way. After we boil everything, I'll let you guys know why it's turning green. So I have my wine ready. Yeah. I've got the mixture and the pickle ready. So mine looks like this. It's more blue on the bottom than on the top, which I'm not sure what the logistics are. <laughs> why, why, why is it is that way? And I'm going to take out a pot. So I've got my pot. I'm going to put it on the side. Sorry. Um, and I'm going to pour the liquid back into the pot and make sure you have a sieve so that the garlic doesn't pop up. I'll show you this. What I'm doing. Ooh, it's sizzling. <gasps> it's sizzling. Oh my God. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a soda. It's like very, very, like I've never seen it sizzle this much before, which is very interesting. Mm. Wow. Very cool. Do you guys see all that bubble? It's alive. Yeah, it's alive. I love it. <laughs> It's a lot of garlic in there. Yeah, it's I, I put add any work. Yeah, I added more into it. Um but I had no idea that this was going to bubble this much, <laughs> which is wow, exciting. That's pretty. Yeah, so I'm going to on to I think my flatmate has been using the stove, so it's a bit sizzling, but don't worry, the heat is off, so um, it should be okay.
So now I'm going to take half a cup of sugar. <coughs> And some white wine. That liquid is very sparkly smelling. Yeah, that's that's exactly where we want it to be. <laughs> so is the product kind of sweet? Sorry? Is the it the um, in product sweet? Yes, it's partially sweet, partially sour, and um, it's not supposed to be very sweet, but it depends on how much sugar you want to put in. If you prefer to prefer it to be sweeter, then you can put in more. It all depends on what what you feel comfortable with. Do you think a quarter cup would work as well? Quarter, uh, quarter cup, cup of sugar? Of. Yeah, I think so. Do that. My sugar has hardened, so I'm going to let it loose. a quarter cup of sugar mm. would I use the same amount of soy and, and um, alcohol? Um, I guess it'll be more uh, like when, it'll be it'll be more salty than sweet but um, I guess it depends mm. on how much you want to put in it all because if you like it uh, saltier then you can put in more soy sauce if you like it um, more milder then you can put in less Okay, so it's flexible. Yeah, it's flexible. It all depends on what the um, household um, soy sauce tastes like. So if it's one of those... Okay. Sorry? I said it's probably salted. Yeah, it's probably salty. Um, it depends on like, because some a lot of people make their own soy, so own soy sauce in, in Asia, so it's... Um, dependent on the household too. Like my <laughs> in Korea we have the two different kinds of soy sauce soy sauce which would be the first batch that we made from the soybean paste and that'll be super salty and then they would mix that actual soy sauce into different kinds of um batches like mixed with different seaweed and different seeds. Um, that will be a bit milder, but more tasty. Oh. Yeah, so that, that kind of soy sauce is less salty. There are different kinds of soy sauce, so it depends on how salty your sauce is. As we put more liquid in here, um, it's going to be um, more than what we origin the liquid that we originally had. So mm -hmm. keep that in mind. You're going to have some leftovers, which you can use for different other kinds of um, ingredients. I'm going to put away my sugar.
mine is heating up quite well. Has everyone um, already started boiling, or what? What stage are you guys at? I just put my pot on to boil. Okay, take great. a few minutes. Amazing. It, it boils faster if you have a lid on. So um, I put okay. my lid on. around the stove to make it nice and tidy. So the reason why we're reusing the water um, is because in the vinegar water that we had, there's um, some good benefits of the garlic that's still in there, um, which can be repurposed for the second batch. But some people, they prefer to use a fresh batch of water um, and vinegar mixture for the second batch. So they throw away the first batch water. But I think it's kind of like when you're making pasta, you still leave like the pasta water to, you know, emulsify the sauce. So it's kind of like that um, procedure where some of the components of the water before, you know, is useful. Um, but I'm sure the taste will also differ depending on if you use the first batch water or not. Boil and take it off. It's supposed to boil. It's supposed to boil over for sure, but I had no idea that it'll just come to the top very, that quickly. So I'm going to put this on the side and let it chill. And then um, I'm going to clean that up afterwards. But yeah, the fire is off. The mixture is cooling. And then we'll put in the mixture once um, the, the the, it's not hot anymore. Um, and while you guys are on that, I'm just going to share the screen really quickly. So we're we've we've done the four steps that you know the th the first three steps, which is super simple. And then I'm just going to tell you guys why the color of the garlic garlic can turn blue. So it's, do you remember um, from the last session, I told you guys about the benefits of garlic tanati, which is the component in the garlic that makes it spicy, which is called alicin. And this comp compound, um, when it's exposed to the sun a lot, that it turns green, which is why um, some of us have blue or green um, coloring in our garlic. But, um, Basically, it means that the garlic that we used is not fresh, so it's not harvested this year, it's harvested last year. And especially in the West, because we don't, they don't make tangati this way, they just leave the garlic out in the open in the sun for a long time, um, which is why it turns blue. Um, but that doesn't mean anything, it's just, it just means that they were exposed to the sun um, more, um, but it's not harmful. It's not mold, it's not toxic, you know, it's completely edible. It's just the compound, um, you know, when it's breaking down, that's why the color becomes green. Um, and then I also wanted to tell you guys about how to eat the garlic tangati. So there's different ways. You we, The most typical way we would eat it is just as side dish when we're eating a big dish of um, fish stew or meat. More, more typically with greasy food like Korean barbecue. So when you have a barbecue, you normally have your leaf, leafy wrap on your hand, and then you put the piece of meat on the on the leaf, 
and then some rice and maybe a bit of kimchi. And then you put the garlic donut in there to balance out the greasiness with the acidity. And then you would wrap it and then have the wrap in one bite. So that's like the most typical way to eat it. But if you're vegan, if you're vegetarian, um, then there's also different ways you can use it. You can dice it up and make it into um, garnish into different kinds of wraps, sandwiches, um, like bowls. Um, if you're a pescatarian, you can put it onto sake, um, um, poke balls. And also there's different ways you can utilize the juice as well. The juice is very, very, um, it becomes very rich over time because it's a fermentation process. So for the picture in here, um, this person used the juice of the garlic tangati to um, stir fry some of the um, tofu strips. And then she put it into a kimbap wrap, like a seaweed wrap um, and with different kinds of vegetables. And that's how she ate it. And because of the um, sour, sweet, salty, garlicky, taste that comes with the juice and makes the tofu strips more flavorful instead of just using um, you know, tofu strips and just letting it go into the wrap. So it's just adding a lot of flavor and you can also add it to broth for a different soup um, instead of using like fish stock or chicken stock, you can use the juice from, juice from the garlic tangati and it'll make it, the flavor more enhanced. Um, so that's kind of basically, you know, the different kinds of ways to use it. And I haven't tried this, but this is just an idea. I personally think it'll go really well if you blend it up and use it as a salad dressing mixed with, mixed with different kinds of mustard um, and like um, olive oil and all of that. Or you can also um, um, make it into like thin slices and then kind of um stir fry it in um, olive oil and put it into some pasta i think would be really nice too so um that's just you can basically use it as normal garlic except it's um, preserved and it's more rich richly flavored um so that's kind of the gist that i wanted to tell you guys um and for those who are new um this open session open fridge session is from this platform that I'm running called Do You Waste Your Taste? Um, and we're basically trying to um, open the minds and palates of um, people around the world to kind of dismantle this food bias that people have towards non-European food. Um, and, I and I think there's a lot of sustainable insights that come with East Asian food, specifically Korean, because that's where I'm from. Um, so like very low waste, low energy, very vegan friendly, and um, basically that, that's the whole purpose of the platform is to kind of share knowledge and insights that I've, get, I've been gathering um, with different home cooks and food experts in Korea. And you guys are all welcome to um, contact me through email or follow Instagram. And I'm also building a website to um, kind of have it be more engaging. And um, I'm going to put up some more of the recordings of these sessions so you guys can go back and watch them. Um, and I think that's about it. Uh, I'm just going to let the mixture cool for a while. So we do have some time to chat if you'd like. Um, what was the process for you guys to um, wait for your garlic to ferment? What was it like for you to, you know, how did your garlic turn out? I know that me and Benoli, we both had our garlic turn out to be blue. Um, than we expected. So how did yours turn out? I, I'm just curious to see um, what your experience has been. I'll go. Yeah, okay, thank you. So um, I looked at it almost every day. Really? And then the day that I noticed it turned green, I thought it's a good thing you mentioned that. Mm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, it was bad. Although it doesn't look like a weird green, it's like a pea green. Like yeah. it looks like a proper vegetable green. Yeah, yeah, it's quite strong. Yeah, the color deepened mm -hmm. over a couple of days. But yeah, it was kind of exciting. 
Yeah. Um, my person lied, like, for his legs. It did give the fear anything, but it did have uh, some of the bubble. Mm-hmm. I see. Yeah, that's exciting. Um, I know, Louisa, you were here from last session. I don't know if you tried making your own garlic tangachi afterwards, or are you just curious to see what the recipe is like and maybe you would like to try later on? Um, and if you don't like to speak, that's completely fine too. You can just write along. <laughs> um, Noli, what about you? What was your process like waiting for it? I was really, really fascinated by it turning blue. And I was like, something is wrong and I don't know what to do. And that's why I asked him, why is this turning blue? And it was like, eventually everything was turning blue. It started from the bottom and then it was like slowly turning blue. So that was really nice, but it was scary. And I thought I did something wrong. But the ten, when you said it's completely fine, I was like, okay, cool. So yeah, that was me. Whenever I used to open the water, I used to be like, this is turning blue. <laughs> Oh, I need to like. Yeah, but it was it was nice um, to see and learn about the blueness. Yeah, I think um, because we associate blue and black with mold and things turning bad, that um, we're definitely scared of it. And I I was too because most of the time when my aunt has made garlic chapati with my family, she would she uses her own gar garlic that she harvested that year. So they were fresh garlic and they never turn blue because, you know, she would cover them up um, so they wouldn't have sunlight and everything. But the ones that I would get in London, um, they, they weren't covered. Um, so in the market, they're all open um, and in Tesco's, they're, you know, open. But I do think because I added the garlic on top of the garlic that I already had, the second batch of garlic that I put in was actually fresher. And that's perhaps why the bottom half of the garlic is bluer than the top. Um, so that, but that's just my assumption. Um, but yeah, it was actually fun for me to watch too. And I, I didn't think about it. I, I should have known. I mean, I, I dealt, I made kimchi before, so I should have known, but I didn't open the lid. Um, and I was like, why is it leaking? Why is it leaking? And I thought, I was just like, <laughs> I thought that was very weird. Um, but but yeah basically um it was leaking and it was bubbly and i was like oh that i should have opened it um but yeah it was really fun for me to to watch it to to make it on my own um because i've never made it on my own before um so yeah i'm, I'm happy to see, turn, see uh, wait and see how it turns out and for the next session i put it on my instagram story to see what people wanted to make and I think the next session could be seaweed soup, which is actually, um, seaweed is incredibly good for the environment. They are, um, they are really good at sequestering carbon. Sorry, I think there's a lot of noise um, that's echoing. I don't know if that's just me. Yeah, I, it's funny. I'm on mute, um, um, but you can still hear me. So maybe if you mute all participants and then that's... I'll just mute you on Google Meet. I think I think some of you are still in that Google Meet because it was still um, echoing from there. So see if you've got that open. Okay, I just muted Yasmin on Google Meet, and perhaps um, if you unmute from Zoom, and maybe it'll be better. Um. I think the noise is gone, <laughs> uh, which is good. But yeah, basically, what was I gonna say? Oh, the seaweed soup. So the seaweed soup, seaweed is very good at carbon sequestration and um, it's not commonly eaten in the West, although it's very abundant in the United States and in UK. Um, so the, the, the growth is there, the product is there, except there's no demand for it. So um, people are in Asia, produce it, they dry it and may manufacture it and send it import, export it to overseas. So, you know, there are carbon um, footprints from importing and ex exporting, but I think there are some brands in UK that are starting to produce um, seaweed and also in the United States. I'm not sure about Canada or Australia and different places, 
Uh, but if you do look, there are um, seaweed companies that um, are starting to grow. I think I heard a podcast about it, which that um, which is which said that it was going to be bigger than than it was before. Or you can go to an oriental store and or oriental part of a supermarket, and they will have seaweed dried seaweed section. Um, and I was thinking we could try making it making it into a version. Ah, oh, you guys have seaweed companies in Australia. Oh, amazing, amazing. Um, yeah, and the the fun part is that because seaweed is so nutritious with so much minerals and vitamins, it is very good for you. And it has been known in Korea to be very good for women, particularly. Um, I'm not sure why. It's everybody just says it. It's like, oh, like seaweed is good for women, but I never really um, researched into specifically why. So if I if I if we do choose to do the seaweed soup for next week, I was hoping that um, yeah, it goes great in salads. Um, um, the tradition is that you eat it on birthdays in Korea because when the woman gives birth, they need energy and warmth. So they would eat the seaweed soup after giving birth. So every birthday, the kid gets to eat it, <laughs> which doesn't make sense. It should be the mom. <laughs> But basically, it's associated with birthdays and giving birth um, because of how nutritious it is. So um, it's super simple. It doesn't take that much time. And as long as you have some um, garlic, maybe some um, fish sauce, if you have it, if you don't have it, you can also use um, um, like mushroom, mushroom broth. Like if you have dried shiitake, you can put it into water and let it soak up the water and the water becomes the the um, infused with the shiitake mushrooms and you can use that for broth cut up the mushrooms and put that into the soup as well um so like there's different ways to cook it into vegan style and with beef or with um um clams so it depends on what you want to put in it you can get creative with it if, if you want to use something that you have in your fridge you can put shrimp it could be nice I've seen dried shrimp putting it in it, but I haven't seen any fresh shrimp put it put in it, but I think it'll go nice. Um, so that was kind of the idea for our next session. And I wanted to ask everyone if if that's okay with everyone, if you think that's interesting. It is so full of iron, yes. And I love it. I think it, oh yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah, you're probably right. It's because of the iron levels um, go down when they're, uh, when they give birth. Um, that, that's probably right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, that's, that was kind of the idea. Um, and I haven't made the event break link yet because I wanted to ask you guys if you'd find that interesting. Um, and um, if you do, then we can, we can do it for next week. What do you say? <laughs> Good, no, yes. <laughs> Um, and then I also made a batch of kimchi that I want to show you guys. Pickle. So this is the batch of kimchi that I made. I just made it yesterday, but it's already looking pretty good. Um, and then I also have I eat quite a lot of it, um, but I also have beet onion pickles. I put some whole peppercorn and bay leaves and different stuff in it to make it nice. But this is also some ideas that I had for you guys to try out with me. Pickled daikon radish, yeah. Oh, wow. I would love to know how that turned out, Amanda. Um, if you'd like to host, uh, um, uh, open fridge session to pickles, daikon, radish, and carrots. In the future, you can email me um, or follow DM me on Instagram. Um, and yeah, that's kind of my plan for the future sessions. And I think the the mixture is still cooling at the moment. You just basically have to pour it back in and let it sit for about three to four weeks afterwards, and it'll be re ready to eat. And I will remind myself and you guys to open the lid once in a while. And hopefully we can have a tasting session um, 
at the end of November, we said last time to give it four weeks and do it on, on the 29th. So um, um, I'm going to set up an Eventbrite, Brent, uh, Eventbrite link for the tasting session for the garlic pickle. And during that time, we can make, um, you know, experiment and make different kinds of dishes as well. Um, so yeah, that's the plan. Thank you so much for coming. And you can use some of the leftover mixture for soup. You can use it um, on different dressings. So it's all up to you. Um, um, and yeah, hopefully that was a lot of fun and it was simple enough for you guys to follow. And I'll put everything up on YouTube. And yeah, thank you so much for coming. Thanks, Rebecca. That was great. No problem. Thanks for coming, Molly.